Now you know the difference between the frame and bounds of a view. With that knowledge, we can create our own basic implementation of a scroll view. To do that, we'll need a gesture recognizer. If you followed along with gesture recognizers in iOS, you'll recall that a gesture recognizer allows us to respond to specific kinds of touches in iOS. There are many different types of gesture recognizers for gestures like pinching, tapping, or swiping. We'll be using a pan gesture because we want to continuously scroll the content of a view as the user pans their finger around. Open the starter project and check out main.storyboard. We've already set up this view controller for you with a view full of pretty planets and space animals. Sadly, the images run off the bottom of the view and there's currently no way to scroll to see them all. We'll turn this view into our own DIY scroll view to add that functionality. First, we'll need a new custom class for our scroll view. Click File, New File, and select a Coco Touch class. Name it DIY Scroll View and make it a subclass of UI View. When a user moves their finger within the view, we want the scroll view to match that movement in the Y axis. As we said, we can use a pan gesture recognizer to track touches like that. We'll add the gesture recognizer itself from Interface Builder in a minute, but we can start our work here by creating the method to handle panning. So create an IB action named handle pan. And give it a UI pan gesture recognizer as a parameter. To get scrolling action, we need to get the translation of the gesture recognizer. Use the translation method and pass in self. That tells us how far the user's finger is moved. To actually move the content inside of our scroll view, we need to change the origin of the view's bounds. The change in the bounds should exactly match the translation value. Remember, we are only panning in the y-axis, so subtract the translation's y-value from the bounds origin's y-coordinate. Finally, you should reset the translation on the gesture recognizer with the setTranslation method. Set that to zero with cg.0 so that the translations don't compound each time the user scrolls. Now we're ready to hook everything up in Interface Builder. First, select the view you want to scroll, and in the Identity Inspector, set the class to the one you made, DIY Scroll View. Then open up the Object Library with Shift-Command-L, look for a pan gesture recognizer, and drag one onto your scroll view. Make sure you get the scroll view, not the stack view. This does all the work of adding the gesture recognizer to the view for you. You can check the connections inspector for the scroll view, and you should see the pan gesture recognizer there. The last step is hooking up the IB action. In the document outline, control click and drag from the gesture recognizer to the scroll view and select handle pan. And now you're ready to build and run. Try dragging a finger, or in our case a mouse pointer, around, and we have a working scroll view. If you've scrolled through any views at all in iOS, you'll immediately notice how clunky our DIY scroll view feels in comparison. It seems especially jerky in the simulator. If you try building to a device, you'll get a smoother experience, but it's still no match for Apple's implementation. This was a great exercise to get you acquainted with the basic idea of how a scroll view works, but we recommend taking advantage of all that Apple's UI scroll view provides instead of trying to write your own. After the upcoming challenge, we'll show you how easy it is to get started with UI scroll view.